Good morning ladies and gentlemen. We start this week's review by looking at the yield curve in the states and the implications that will have for the US dollar. This is the five-year note, this is the yield and this is the, um, uh, the futures. As you can see this is uh, the yield chart is showing absolutely very little sign of topping. The Bollinger Bands are coming in and it's showing that it's going to remain pretty much fixed in this kind of area, uh, trading between a yield of 290 and possibly all the way down to 267. But that is roughly the area that the five-year is going to stay in. If we contrast this with the 10-year, you can see that the 10-year appears uh, to have topped slightly more than the 5-year. Uh, here we have the same picture of the Bollinger Bands coming in. So here we're in a uh, range between, say, 298 and possibly as low as 280. We are consolidating in this area before we make the next move. If we now look at the 30-year instead, and this is the yield chart, we can see that yields are comfortably below the 319 to 322 level that Gunlack keeps on talking about and that we agree is very, very significant. We tried, we failed, we came back, and now we are uh, possibly going to test the 200-day moving average around the 295 area. So at the, for the time being, 295, to possibly 314 is the level that we trade 20 basis points but this is a far more uh, positive chart in terms of uh, lower yields than the one we showed you in five years and ten years what does this mean this means that the yield curve keeps on flattening in the states uh, it's a bull flattening whereby five years, uh, two years, five years, ten years go up in yield while the 30-year uh, stays constant in yield. If we compare and contrast this with the uh, bobble, which is the five-year in Germany, we see that we are basically holding on to the uh, lower Bollinger Bands. Uh, yields here are uh, falling, if anything, uh, we could see easily next week uh, a test of minus 28. Uh, and everything here is showing that the yields are uh, anchored, that if anything, they're coming lower. It would take a real surprise to go through the uh, minus 8 basis points level and we don't foresee that in the foreseeable future simply because Draghi has told us that we are more likely to be in this kind of phase again going down all the way down to minus 30 basis points in yield rather than uh, what we expected which was a break if we high. now instead look at the 10-year note uh, the Bund we are looking at a uh, more anchored chart we are in a trading range with, which could be minus 28 to say minus 55. So we are certainly less uh, yield negative than the five year. That to us indicates that the uh, German curve is likely to be anchored and actually to steepen as money leaves uh, Europe and goes into the US long end. That to us is dollar bullish and uh, we will now look at the uh, likely volatility of the dollar because we firmly believe that the market will actually uh, shift its trading focus from fixed income and equities uh, to the currencies in the very short term. If we start to look at the uh, DXY, the dollar index, we can see that basically it's been trading in a channel uh, for a long time, apart from this period in 2016-2017 uh, when it tried to break out. It failed and it came back. 
Now we could quite easily go and test these levels around 96.50 in the dollar index. If we uh, now uh, have a look at a uh, daily chart that is seen even better, you uh, we we have you know these levels we have drawn them many many uh, months ago and they remain a changed. The Bollinger Bands are now uh, going out. We foresee a battle here around 95.07 uh, over several days, something like this, and then a break back up to this very, very important level, which we drew many, many months ago at 96.50. 96.50 is going to be a very important swing level, and that is the level that we foresee the dollar will go to. That will be the fifth wave of this which would be in the first wave, the third wave, the fourth wave, and the fifth wave back up to 96.50. That is what we are looking for in the next couple of weeks, a uh, swing higher in the dollar index to 96.50. How is this uh, foreseen dollar strength likely to impact uh, equities? Well, you, this is a weekly chart of the equities in the States, and as you can see, we are absolutely flat on the week. We did nothing. We have these uh, Bollinger Bands coming in, uh, and they, the top of it is going to be somewhere around 28.14, 28.15. We would be shocked if the market had uh, much more upside than that. That is a percent. To the upside and possibly uh, over the course of the couple of weeks in June that we have remaining it could come down and it would be perfectly normal for it to retest uh, this red line at some stage which at that time will be around 2700 as you know around 2700 we have lots of gaps so basically we're in a hundred point range in a four percent uh, range for equities up and down. We are closer to the upper range and the lower range and that would actually coincide with our view of the dollar because as the dollar rises by two or three percentage points it is a headwind for US equities and it's going to be very very difficult for US equities to march higher and resume a strong bullish trend with the dollar being strong. If we go to a daily uh, time frame we see that these same Bollinger Bands are going to be around that 20, uh, 28.10 level that we identified earlier. And we have lots and lots of support underneath, especially at this level, which is going to be uh, around 2700. That uh, to us confirms uh, what we are seeing here, lots of indecision, we will go uh, sideways. Don't forget that the uh, latter two weeks of June are uh, some of the weakest uh, in uh, in the year. Uh, so seasonality is very weak. It would be uh, unrealistic to expect the market to break significantly higher than this 2805.10 level and this high. It might try it, it might reject, it might come back slightly, but it just unlikely to be a route. It's more likely to be more consolidation, uh, which eventually opens the gateway for higher prices going into the autumn. Last week we said watch XLF. Strength in ES and in the technology sector uh, can only uh, take ES higher if XLF, which is the second largest sector, uh, confirms that strength. We said watch 28.30. Here is 28.30. We uh, failed miserably at 28.30 and came all the way back. The only reason why uh, the ES was unchanged on the week was because of technology strength. And therefore it is unrealistic unless we take out that 28.30 level on a closing basis to expect that ES can go much higher than the level that we showed you, which is around 2810. 
this would need to do significantly better than it is. And if you look at the shape of the moving averages and the shape of the whole chart, it just does not portend uh, that we will have uh, significant strength from XLF, uh, which would help the index to go higher. XLK, which is the one that produced all the strength uh, last week, is closed at a new high, but it is looking quite toppy. And it would not be a surprise for it to just trade sideways for a couple of weeks before uh, it makes yet another move up. Therefore, this also suggests that we are unlikely to see uh, much action to the upside in ES and we are more likely to just meander sideways and have uh, several dips which also uh, can easily be bought. And this is the EEM chart which we posted on Friday on Twitter and you can see how now we are retesting the level uh, from uh, in February where we bounced so fiercely from. We basically indicated that we are likely to refill these gaps uh, anywhere. Uh, if we are right and the dollar is going to be strong, EEM is going to be weak and therefore this area is an area that we expect. Anything below 43.71 is going to be the area where we can finally buy EEM uh, knowing that we have some significant upside. This to us is a beautiful five wave with now an ABC correction which should terminate somewhere between 43 and 42. This is going to be an absolutely beautiful level at which to buy EEM for the long term. As we, as you know, we don't think that dollar strength is going to be here forever. This temporary dollar strength uh, is going to be the opportunity that we've been looking for to enter long EEM positions. This weekly chart of gold is yet another reason why we think the, uh, the dollar is going to be remaining strong over the foreseeable future. You can see that it's now looking uh, pretty weak and we will probably have a continuation of this lovely trading range with this very important pivot point at 1237. Would love to see the market back there. Uh, that would be uh, the level that we think gold is going to be at when the uh, DXY had, has achieved the 9650 area and that will be a significant level from which to expect a turn and uh, dollar weakness, gold strength, commodity strength and EEM strength. So at the moment what we think is happening is we're getting the volatility that we had in equities being transferred to the currency markets. Uh, the currencies are going to take the strain as a result of uh, Draghi's low, uh, lower for ever or for longer. Basically, the uh, European Union interest rates are not going to go up until Draghi leaves office. And that is going to provide us with a period of several weeks of strength in the dollar, which finally is going to uh, peter out around 96.50 and 12.37 in gold, and then the music can change. A final chart to confirm our view is basically Euro USD. You can see that if this was wave one and this was wave three, and we're now still in wave four, possibly going sideways for a couple of days, uh, maybe a week before we break through this very important uh, 114.85 level and possibly test this second level, which has been here for years, uh, one just over 111. That would be uh, ideal as far we, as we are concerned. Uh, anything be below 112 uh, is going to be the buy area that we think we can achieve after a break of the previous lows and go all the way down to 111 and change. That would be beautiful. That would uh, synchronize with our view in gold and our view in EEM. Therefore, that is why we think for the next uh, two or three weeks, we are going to see dollar strength. 
as to the biases, we think that uh, the US curve is very much anchored. Uh, we think that it keeps on flattening while the Bund and the Bobble uh, keep on actually uh, going down in yield and the yield curve there keeps on steepening simply because there is uh, no reason to uh, to expect any movement uh, upwards in uh, uh, euro rates for at least another year and therefore that curve is now uh, very much uh, anchored and people will be looking to uh, move out of it and go into the US. SPX, we can't really see it significantly above 28.10 simply because we see a stronger dollar and that is going to be a headwind. NQ, yes, it did outperform on the upside. It is the absolute leader. You can forget about trading SPX. NQ is the one that if you are bullish you express your view in otherwise uh, not a lot can be expected from XBX alone because of XLF uh, until this resumes the rally above 2830 ES will lag and it just cannot do what NQ can do as simple as that volatility is still dormant it's showing us no breaks to the upside uh, 1425 seems to be as high as it can get and that tells us that the upper part uh, the upper part of the range is around 2810 and the lower price uh, of the range is around 2700 where we have significant gaps so we just don't see a violent breakdown in uh, in the uh, American market anytime soon European equities are probably going to do slightly better than uh, SPX, but not much, and that is the result of the dollar. But what is going to be interested, interesting are the levels in EEM and DX, which we showed you. This is the really important level. When we get to 96.50, we want to have uh, very good positions looking for a lower dollar, uh, probably higher equity prices in the US and uh, most importantly uh, the uh, the turn into EEM from uh, weak to strong. Thank you very much indeed and tweet you on Monday.